to achieve in life. You become, you have to be bold, take action, which might not give you answers, but you have to keep on it. You fail, you get up. Today in the Kenya, there are four million youth facing streets. So, the responsibility of holding, expanding, continuously making sure that those who work for you continue to work and open up more for over, over and over time. You can. So, there is a possibility, and this possibility is, is great, that you can multiply. As you multiply, we multiplied our businesses. We multiplied our wealth. So do we multiply our goodwill. And, and this is what the essence of life is for. I'm now 95 years old. I've achieved so many things in my life. All the owners that can think whether I can go to the Queen, they give an order. Whether the Indian government, give an order. The Kenyan government, everybody who has, has recognized the work that we do. But the work is not only for myself and not limited to my family. The Sandaria Foundation in UK will do their work, the Sandaria Foundation in India will do their work, because the idea was is not that you alone, it's the society. I can say a few 40,000 people work for us, multiplied by that family, but then I live here. What is Kenya getting out of me? Well, it surprises me that, you know, we have got more and more problems. Population is increasing very large number, and to contain them. And everybody has got ambitions, wishes, but no hard work, no determination. And so you get overlapping now. When I see the children, I used to be chancellor of two universities, now I'm one university, and I see them pacing streets without any person goes home. What do they see? Two people, three children sitting at home, four children sitting at home. We will not be able to provide them. And you can't go out and beg either. Yeah. There are issues that keep on coming. And there are financial problems keep on coming. Family problems keep on coming. The country's problems keep on coming. But you've got to remain in balanced mind. And to keep balance in your life, in not to get a, oh my God, I got upset about everything. Accept life as it comes. And I think it has done very well for us. With the grace of God, that my brother is two years older than me, 97. And everybody says, you, you'll be 100. And I said, I don't want to be 100. As long as I'm working, as long as my mind works. I, I asked my, today's my brother's help today. And they said, well, now you know he's not recognizing. At 97, he's not. I said, listen, I don't want to be that. I want to be what Madhu Chandarya is, who is 97. I have to be still focused, sharp, and has been be able to do it. Life is how you build it. Life is not something that you read a book that this is the ideology. No. It's day to day how you act. Day to day how you behave day to day how you live. If I live in a, in a, in a 
standard in a better way and worry about the others. Otherwise, why should I worry about anyway? There's no need for me to worry. But I worry about my plant. If they don't do well, they might have to throw away the people. Their family will go away. Where would they go? Because I created them. I gave them the hope of working. Maybe still there's time for me to do good work. When I go to sleep, this is my routine. Have I hurt anybody? Oh yes, I hurt this fellow. Uh, I should have not said something, what I said. Uh, it was not necessary for me to say. I could have kept my mouth shut. I, I, I didn't treat him well. I can't go at night and ask him, pardon me. I ask the forgiveness then, that I realize that no, I'm not that good. Now, doing that part is the most difficult in life. To accept that I'm not done right. Accept it, apologize about it. You don't go there, but you, you feel hurt about it. And in five minutes, I'm sick. I have now cleaned the slate for the day. The human being is always the first is lust for anything and everything. I love it, I want it, I, I, this is mine. Well, these are the flaws. Yes, it, it's yours. Nobody takes it away from you. But suppose somebody takes it away from you. So, did I have it? I didn't have anything. I came with nothing and I got both of them. So, let's not worry about that part. The flaws always going to be in life. Shortcomings are always going to be in life. Hurts are always going to be in life. But to remain in balance so that you can live happily, that when you go to sleep, you can go to sleep like that, not get up and, oh, two o'clock, I'm just this way, I'm talking that way. No. The point is that, and that is to be truthful to yourself. Well, no, I wouldn't want to do anything. I'm, what I'm doing is good. As long as I help more people, I can set up more institutions. Good. Every individual must have a goal of removing pain in the world. In my life, there was pain. Somebody helped me. If somebody else says, I have to help, I'll help. So, I think that, that that overall concept of that we are all interwoven like this. You cannot, you cannot just say that I don't know. You have to know. And you have to be a part of it. And the minute you start understanding the pains of others, you forget your pain. There's so many people that have met in my life. Mandela, I was a chairman, of, I was a, a, a trustee of the Pan-African uh, Pan uh, Parliament. He came down to open up. He was laughing like, here it is. And so it, it, lots of people, lots of people. And ministers and presidents and, and dignitaries and monks and everybody that you can think of that I can met, I met. And what have I taken from them? I taken from them a humility. Mother Teresa came to this home four times. Now, today she's a saint. <laughs> but 
and should not take a drop of water. He said, I'll eat and drink with my people while serving. Quit. Uh, I don't know how they decided that I should be given OBE, order of the preacher pie. So uh, when I went over there, I was told. So there were four people who were getting old orders, or four or five people at that time. So I said, not to speak until spoken. Not to speak until spoken. So when I went over there, the queen pinned. And then after that, she said, where you come from? And I said, well, your majesty, I come from a country where you came as a princess and became a queen. Oh, Kenya, Sagana, tree tops. And she started talking about everything. And this wonder did you know what is going on? And she wanted to know how things are and whether I've been over there again and how the things, everything is happening in it. Now look, when I came, when I then finished, he sort of said, but you are told. No. I said, listen, you say it very clearly. She asked me where I come from. And when I told him where I come from, she got involved in it and said, interested in So I think that the people are, you know, Humility is not a, something you can go and buy in the shop. You, you meet people and you see them and their behavior and their lifestyle and their, then you think that, hey, hey, what the hell you are? I was one of eight. My wife was one of nine. And we had only two. Because I think that the when we were four or five or eight, you know, it just, it, it, the life was at that, that level. But when the life gets at this level, the education, the medical, the styles, the clothes, the everything that you require, you cannot afford more than two, three children. So two. And my daughter has only one. And my son has two. I think that it's not you build alone. It's God's grace. My family, mm -hmm. that's it. Nothing more than that. I don't think I give a value to A, B, C, D. Possession is something my own family, because to whom I owe, and I have a responsibility. Look at that. <laughs> I don't own anything. Listen, one thing. I don't own anything. Everything belongs to the family. There's a family trust which creates the businesses where we all work, we get our salaries, and that's it. But the time when I go, I have nothing else to say, oh, this is mine and this is theirs. This house belongs to the family, it goes to the family, finish.